BBC News. Hello, I'm Tom Watts. The U.S. State Department has said it will continue negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program after the election of a hardline cleric, Ebrahim Raisi, as president. A State Department spokesman said the U.S. regretted that Iranians were denied a free and fair electoral process. Here's Steve Jackson. Both the Biden administration and Iran would like to revive the international nuclear deal abandoned by President Trump, but not at any price. Delicate negotiations have been going on behind closed doors, and Washington is clear that it wants this process to continue under Iran's new leader. U.S. officials hope progress will accelerate now it's clear who will be in charge in Tehran. Some analysts think Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, would like a deal in the six weeks before Mr. Raisi takes office. That way, the outgoing reformists can take the blame for capitulating to the West, and the new government can claim credit for the economic benefits that will come with the lifting of sanctions. The number of Brazilians who've died with the coronavirus has now passed half a million as the country struggles to cope with the third wave of the pandemic. 2,300 people have died with COVID in the past day. Leonardo Rocha reports. The health minister, Marcelo Queiroga, confirmed the landmark number on his Twitter account. 500,000 lives lost due to the pandemic that affects our Brazil and the world, he wrote. Earlier, thousands of people in cities across the country protested against the government of President Jair Bolsonaro, demanding that COVID vaccinations are speeded up. So far, only 11% of the population has been fully vaccinated against the virus. The president has opposed strict lockdown measures, saying they'd affect the poorest in society. But he insists he's done all he can to buy vaccines from several countries. Armenian voters go to the polls today in a snap parliamentary election that will set the course for the country after its recent war. Opinion polls have put the governing party, led by Nikol Pashinyan, neck and neck with that of the former president, Robert Kochiyan. The early vote is being held in an attempt to resolve the political crisis in Armenia caused by its disastrous war with Azerbaijan last year. The president of the Democratic Republic of Congo has, announced, has denounced what he called mafia-like practices within the country's armed forces. Felix Chisikedi was speaking on a visit to Ituri province where rebel groups frequently attack civilians. Will Ross reports. President Chisakadi has pointed out one of the major reasons why dozens of rebel groups still cause havoc, despite years of military operations and a UN peacekeeping force that costs a billion dollars a year. Poorly paid Congolese soldiers are supposed to stop the insecurity, but some individuals within the army are, just like the rebel commanders, busy making money from Eastern Congo's mineral deposits. World News from the BBC. Reports from southern Poland say about 20 families have been made homeless by a fire that swept through part of a village of the village of Nova Biala. Photos on social media show a, show a street of houses in flames. A large number of farm buildings were also damaged. Police in the U.S. state of Arizona say they have shot a man who drove a pickup truck into cyclists taking part in a charity race. Six people were taken to hospital, four of them are critically injured. The suspect fled the scene but was chased by police who shot him when he resisted arrest. Britain's former parliamentary speaker, John Burko, has switched allegiance from the governing Conservatives to the opposition Labour Party. He served as a Conservative MP before he became Speaker of the House of Commons, a post he resigned from in 2019 after 10 years in the job. In an interview with the Observer newspaper, Mr Burko says he regards the Conservatives under Prime Minister Boris Johnson as reactionary, populist and sometimes even xenophobic. In the Euro 2020 football tournament, Spain have drawn 1-1 with Poland, leaving the issue of who qualifies from their group wide open. Alex Kapstick reports. Another difficult night for Spain, their Euro 2020 campaign still lacking inspiration. Once again they dominated possession, once again they couldn't cut loose against physical determined opponents. At least they managed their first goal of the tournament, delivered by the much maligned Alvaro Morata after VAR ruled he was onside for a simple tap-in. Poland remained a threat, star striker Robert Lewandowski squandered a glorious chance just before the interval. He made amends after the break with a brilliant header. Almost immediately Spain won a penalty. Gerard Moreno hit the post. Morata missed the rebound. They pressed for a winner without ever looking convincing. The whistles at full time from the home crowd in Seville said it all. BBC News.